It's nighttime in Point Reyes Station now, and it's uh, time when the day trippers have left. They've consumed all their oysters, they've all the cheese from the cowgirl creamery that they can take, and just enjoyed walking and taking in the whole essence of a town that was founded really as a railroad uh, stop many many probably about a hundred years ago it has a distinction of sitting here on the earthquake f probably the most well-known fault line in all of uh, all of the world that would be the san andreas fault it's what created tamales bay and split that piece of land off from well mostly split it off from california the coast and created a uh, peninsula uh, on the top and the bottom here which point ray station it's kind of at the bottom and we're very close to the san andreas fault here you can see the uh, mountains behind me that gives you an indication that the earth shifts a lot i hope you enjoyed part one of the uh, travel log settling down for the night here Let's take in a few night scenes of Point Reyes as we begin, begin part two. And as usual, your thumbs up will be appreciated. I hope you're enjoying our little journey. sure does get cold out here it's about 49 degrees you can see the town has emptied out i think i'm the last person walking around it is chilly as i said before make sure you pack a jacket when you come down you're very co close to the coast and you know what that means in california chilly 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 well i did pick up a sandwich at the palace market that's going to be my dinner tonight sign off for the evening and uh, wish you all a good evening see you uh, tomorrow as we continue part two
Good morning, everybody. From Point Ray Station, a few short scenes of sunrise and early morning down here in Marin County. One of the things that I really like about Point Ray Station is the sense of community down here. And um, it's a lot of people think California has a reputation of voting themselves taxes they never saw a tax proposition they didn't like and this community i think really exemplifies that but i think in a positive way uh people seem to come together here in a major uh, in a major way no matter what they have their own local radio station kwmr that's totally supported by uh listeners and they also have behind me what's called the uh, Dance Palace here. And at first, it was kind of an unusual name because I don't know if they really have dances or things. It's more of a community center. And they do have a lot of events. Of course, the pandemic has really put a bite into what they do here. But it seems to me that they took an old church and converted it into... Of uh, this community center, and I really like that. I I also get the sense that when things hit the fan and something bad happens in the community and in the town of Point Reyes, about 800 people live down here, and they really join together to do whatever they can to fix the problem. And I think that that is a great thing. for another pastry. I think that the Bovine Bakery should be open and that's really the heart. Next to the uh, Palace Market, it's really the morning place to get together and meet friends and everything is fresh baked. So let's head over there and uh, grab another pastry to get our day going here. Looks like the crowd beat me to it. I don't even think it's 8 a.m. in the morning and they're already uh, they're already lined up here. Morning. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Thank you. Lined up at the Bovine Bakery. This has really got to be the coolest phone booth in the world, old phone booth. You don't see many in the world anymore. But look at what they converted this into for the uh, pharmacy here. A happy heart, a healthy life. It's got all the mirror in there. And I know I showed a little bit of that last night, but it took a lot of effort to take what would have been an old piece of junk and make it nice. Many of you probably don't even recognize that is an old style phone book where they used to hang and you would lift it up there and look up the number. Ain't progress wonderful. Ended up getting a blueberry scone here. Ooh, I think it was about three something. Fresh out of the Bovine Bakery this morning. I'm going to enjoy the rest of it here. Fully loaded. This is kind of strange. I mean, they don't even have any signage outside of this place, but I guess they're doing the morning brew too. You can see some people lined up there 
ready to get their coffee. If you're going to come into town, just realize at 8, 9 o'clock at night, this town is buttoned down. And uh, if you don't have your coffee, your beer, whatever, you're out of luck until about uh, 6, 30, 7 o'clock the next morning when it's coffee time in Point Reyes Station. I mentioned earlier the community radio station here and it takes a lot to keep these going and years ago I got hooked on KWMR just because of their independence and the local people that they would use totally volunteers to uh, fill the airwaves FM, what is that? FM 90, 92.3 KWMR.org. Look inside of the radio station here. You can kind of see that, uh, boy, do they have a lot of unbelievable amount of uh, CDs and things. And very listenable radio station. By now you've seen that Point Ray Station is really a lovely place to live. It's a very tight-knit community. It's a place where not a lot of things happened, but back in uh, 2013, something monumental happened. It really shook this community's roots and kind of split the community, and that had to do with the Drake Bay Oyster Company, which at one time provided 40% of the oysters for the state of California. Tamales Bay, which is very close to here, is a very famous uh, place for the production of oysters. And in the mid-1970s, Drake Bay Oyster Company was uh, formed, and they had a lease from the federal government for the production of oysters which they were raised out there in basically cages and when it came time to renew the lease in 2013 the federal government was changing its idea about preservation of waters and preservations of bays and whether you should have uh, commercial activity in those waters so they denied the renewal of the um, lease for the Drake Bay Oyster Company and it was a case that went all the way to the United States Supreme Court with the end result is if you have a lease there's no guarantee that that lease is going to continue here your whole life oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, do you remember what happened with the Drake Bay Oyster Company I and do. going yeah. up? To, how did you feel about that? Were you on the side of letting them? I was him, on the side of Lenny. Yeah. Let, letting it continue? Yeah. Okay. So, this is, I was mistaken, this is really not the oyster farm processing facility no, here. This is an old engine barn. Okay. They used to turn the trains around here back okay. in the day. Okay. And, and it was a YMCA and it was a Lions Club. Okay. But, uh, you know, anybody knows that oysters don't harm the water. They clean it. Right. You know, They're filtering. This was um, a political right. move. Though. Yeah, and it was a shame because they probably spent, I don't know, how many tens of thousands to get all the way up to the Supreme Court. Oh, and re I always thought the oysters were also filtering things that uh, could not harm the environment. Right. but. Yeah. Then I heard some of the employees kind of started beefing about the working conditions and kind of piled on top of the pain that the company was already feeling at that particular time. Did it impact the economy here or oh, was it? Slightly. Okay. There's two more oyster companies in Tomales Bay. Right. And then there's a third that's a private okay. oyster company. Yeah, and I know then, Hog Island. Uh, yeah, you know, these guys out here. At, um, well, it was Johnson's Oyster Company, and then it became Lenny's. Mm -hmm. They were the only cannery on the coast. And they were 60%, I believe, of the oysters. 
Yeah, they said like Drake Bay was 40% of the production they would, of them. If these guys yeah. ran out, they would give them oysters. You know, they had it worked out so they could help each other. So who opposed that? Was it because the Obama administration and Interior Department had a change of heart about uh, uh, federal waters? You know, or? I'm not sure who okay. opposed it. Um, I know there was a congressman that came in that shut it down. Okay. I think it was from Arizona. I may okay. be wrong. Well, it was a shame because I, I guess at that time it had some sort of impact, but it did kind of decide the case of whether um, a lease can automatically be renewed or whether the government can say no. And I, I felt kind of bad for the company that uh, that what came I down. I understand, Charlie Johnson gave Drake Sestero to the park. Okay. For the uh, lifetime lease. As long as the Johnson lived on the property, it, it was unbreakable. Right. But when when the Johnsons left and and Lenny took over, um, there was no Johnson there. So and the, and it was it and at that time I think it was set for twelve years. Okay. And twelve years was up. Well, I guess that would explain the point of law. Then it was a controversy, right. but. Uh, I hope, um, so this used to be the engine barn for yeah. turnaround. How long ago did the train stop running here? Do you... About in the 50s. 50s, yeah. okay. It used to run up all the way up to Tamales, past Tamales, and then all the way through the Redwoods, I think, to San Rafael. Well, I'll tell you, thank you for your time. You live in a beautiful, beautiful place here. It's incredibly uh, beautiful. It's so, rich. It's self-sustained. Uh, we have our own gardens everywhere. As a matter of fact, I got Yeah, I heard you talking about that. But it's also the sense of community with KWMR radio station and the Dance Palace and all those places. I live in Santa Rosa, so I'm not really used to that sort of uh, right. sense of community. So it's always amazing to drive down here. Uh, coming down is beautiful. So I'm envious of you. Thanks for sharing today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Have a great day. That was really nice of that gentleman to clarify a few things. And it's nice to talk to the locals down here. And it did split the community, those that appreciated the jobs, those that appreciated that the oysters are really filtering uh, animals. But a lease is a lease is a lease. And the terms of the lease, as he explained, when the Johnson family was no longer, no one in the Johnson family was on the property anymore. I guess that was the point that the United States stepped in the Department of Interior, Interior and said, no mas. One interesting sidelight here. Not many communities of 800 people have such a contentious case that makes it all the way up to the United States Supreme Court. That's going to be a wrap on my overnight adventure to Point Ray Station here in Marin County. I hope that you have enjoyed this brief visit and uh, your thumbs up are most appreciated. And if you're traveling Highway 1, the Pacific Coast Highway, this is a great place to stop. So thanks for watching and thumbs up are appreciated.